So I got another request involving multiple videos yet again and this time it's just simply New Testament so just a whole bunch of summaries and you know throughout the yeah, course of me uploading these I'll just mix in some other requests so yeah, don't worry I'm not gonna just straight up do this yeah I'm gonna mix in some others at the same time and yeah I'm gonna just be honest right now these I mean I know I was doing like what two videos per day just for like a few days uh, like last week or first week of January I just say that um, but they may slow down a little bit yeah, like yeah like I'm not gonna do two videos per day like all the time but yeah it may slow down in general these uploads just because I'm back in college now and you know I gotta go back to some classes that is just simple stuff like that so I'm gonna try and pre-record which is what I'm doing right now and get them out while I can but yeah I'm just being honest right now just yeah I may not have the time sometimes but for now it should be good but other than that, I'm gonna just start this up here. I hope you guys will enjoy this. Make sure you like, subscribe, and yeah, let's just see what was New Testament 18 is all about. What if the evil mastermind of the Toaru franchise, who tragically lost his baby daughter, causing him to try and destroy all magic and defy fate itself, okay. is also a complete degenerate? A just what? Like the real person he's based on. I'll be doing a rundown of New Testament 18, 18 the so... volume, where we finally saw Toma confront Alistair Crowley. Yeah, so all, all about Alistair. A twist in the series, as the dark secret behind Archbishop Laura Stewart was unraveled. Our story begins as Motoharu tells Toma that Alistair is trying to hunt him and Fran down for being spies and for shooting Alistair in the face in the volume of crime. <laughs> hey, and yo. Motoharu is the Siscon sergeant who loves his oh, sister Micah yeah. too much. Nah, he likes his lollies to too. Him, as leaving her behind in the city would be a huge risk. Our team arrive at Academy City's walls as the districts. Hold up, actually, yeah, I'm gonna look at this right now. So, District One, okay, three, four, yeah, they're kind of um spread out here. Yeah, because you got one at the top and you got two way at the bottom. Actually, this is perfect. I'm gonna like, yeah, take a screenshot of this and actually, um, yeah, save it for later because I know the districts is just like. Yeah, this is it right here. So Western Tokyo, Eastern, okay, Academy City Outer, yep. We got F E. All right. Escape. However, Alistair knows. Oh yeah, we still got Altenus too, right? Sends a curse into the wall, which hits Micah in the form of a shadowy blade implanted in her chest. Toma rushes in to stop the curse with a Magic Breaker his special right hand with the ability to destroy supernatural powers. What is warned by Index and Offenus, who say that doing this would cause Micah 100, to shatter from the inside. While Micah herself seems unharmed, even if she is a maid kebab, the curse is attracting relentless beasts made of chains hunting them down that simply regenerate if killed. And to make matters worse, killing them envelops Toma in an aura known as Karma, which grows in size, increasing the number of chains and changing their essence. The squad decide the only solution is now to confront Alistair directly, in order to bring the curse to an end once and for all. And so they return to District 7 and enter Alistair's fortress, the Windowless Building, which is also a spaceship and looks like a giant futuristic I don't think I knew about that. Into a world of darkness. We've long yeah, that, and we're not that type of darkness. Inside being extended, surpassing this word I'm not going to pronounce, space. What are you, stupid? What's the matter with you? <laughs> no, that's all right. I, I can't pronounce none of this either. Intended to represent a mountain, <laughs> Bro. as Alistair was something of a mountain climber himself. With the chains approaching, Thomas suddenly falls off the stairs as he wakes to find himself surrounded by fog. He then witnesses Christmas Carol-esque visions of a young schoolboy known as Edward being bullied by his peers and teachers for not believing in God. Even his parents scolded and ridiculed him. A plant pot was even thrown towards Edward with Toma trying to intercept it, but he could not interact with these visions, and his voice would not reach them. The silver-haired Edward swore he would continue his edgelord atheist phase, and would find the truth of the world. By the way, 
In case you hadn't guessed, Edward is Ali's. Yeah, yeah, we. Sparks I can tell. Yeah. And Tomer found himself next to his friends on the staircase once more, as if he had never fallen to begin with, and the others having no recollection of the visions or him falling. The chained beasts enclosed on them, and surprise, motherfucker! What happens to be Alistair bursts out from one of them, attacking with his magic. The impact causing Terma to fall once more. I think at this rate, Terma should be added to Fall Guys as DLC. In the fog again, Terma meets a hot Neko MILF called Mina Mathers, the wife of Alistair's former mentor and arc rival, Samuel Little McGregor Mathers. My god, Jesus. that's my name. But she's not okay. the Mina who died nearly a century prior. She's a recreation which Alistair created as his personal AI, also known as Reading Thought, I mean Foth 78. With Toma, she's basically acting as his mountain guide and showing visions of Alistair's past to him. And Alistair created these visions in order to remind him of his past failures. Jeez, that's depressing. Toma is introduced to visions featuring the two leaders of the Golden Dawn, Westcott and Sam Mathers. The Golden Dawn was not only Alistair's former magic cabal, long before he founded Academy City, but it was also known as one of the strongest and most influential magic side organizations in history. Meanwhile, Mikoto and Misaki are currently pretending to be a generic Yori couple. As that's what the thirsty basement dwellers want nice. to see, Toma keeps cutting in and out of climbing the stairs with the squad and spending time in the flashback fog of fun with Mina. He sees Alistair's introduction to the Golden Dawn, who Sam Mavis takes under his wing as he believes Alistair has a lot of potential as a magician and both are willing to explore more liberal and experimental sides of magic as opposed to upholding tradition. Alistair used pigeon blood for a ritual, and this deeply Of course, there gotta be Westcott, some animal involved with the, any type of experiment. Sam Mathers wanted to devise an innovative magic work kit via these radical... That's his later on name, so okay. The Golden Dawn and magic as a whole would become more accessible to the vast majority of people. Westcott, however, was pretty opposed to this, as he was gatekeeping the hell out of the Golden Dawn believing it should only be accessible to elite individuals. Next, Mina shows Toma life for Alistair after the Golden Dawn, but not before Toma falsely calls Alistair a normie, to which Mina details how Alistair would write his own erotic novels, describe male genitalia in hundreds of ways, and cooked his own magical semen cookies. Okay. What? He's a degen. But a base DJ. Okay. We go from lighthearted to serious as we see Alistair with his wife, Rose Edith Kelly. And the baby. Ro I'll just say Lilith Rose. So long, it even puts Sam to shame. But we can call her Lilith. This was the happiest time of Alistair's life, as he truly loved his first daughter more than anything. However, the joy quickly turned into sorrow as Lilith succumbed to illness before her second birthday, which caused her death acting as the trigger for Alistair to curse the destiny of the entire world. And as a result, Rose became an alcoholic and was sent to a lunatic asylum. Despite not being a parent himself, Tomo was reduced to tears after learning about this tragedy. After repeating the falling process, we go back to the Golden Dawn before the birth of Lilith, specifically at the end of the Cabal in 1900, at the Battle I'm going of back, Lilith, okay. orchestrated by Alistair himself. Before we start the battle, if we get to 20,000 subscribers, I will make a video about our boy Toma, how overpowered is he, and also, does he have plot armor? If you yeah, video, well, yeah, he already made that though by now. meeting with his other mentor and friend, Alan Bennett, who reveals to him that Sam Mavis discovered that the use of magic contributes to something known as sparks and spray between phases. Phases being different layers of reality that span the entire universe. For a better understanding of them, I recommend watching my New Testament 9 summary video. Uh, yeah, I, I just looked at that. These sparks and spray contribute towards predetermined events. Essentially, certain things are destined to happen 
regardless of free will. And in order to protect himself and the others working on the magical toolkit, Sam Mathers was using something known as the Treasure of Blythe Road, while not informing the others. And Alistair had previously used clairvoyance to learn that his unborn future daughter would prematurely die. And from Alan's explanation, this was directly due to the sparks and spray that Mavis failed to inform Alistair about. Alan then taught Alistair his Blasting Rod spell, the power to increase any attack multiply by 10 and spiritual tripping which allows the user to create illusion based weapons with these new techniques at his disposal alistair cursed the entire golden dawn including himself for being part of it which would succumb all members to a fate worse than death alistair murdered alan who accepted his demise before saying goodbye to his friend next alistair attacked the head temple of the golden dawn at the battle of blythe road and manipulated the members loyal to mavers and the ones loyal to westcott to fight each other thanks to a forged letter amidst the chaos of the battle alistair would kill golden dawn magicians while making it appear it had been done by a magician of an enemy faction he managed to steal the treasure, which was an arrow resembling a human arm, which once belonged to a saint. Yes, this was Imagine Breaker before Toma was even born. Alistair used the arrow to kill both Westcott and Mavis before it suddenly disappeared, as Alistair took his revenge and vowed to destroy all phases and magic as a whole. Using magic to destroy magic? It's ironic. Doing this would restore what is known as the pure world, a scientific world without magic, where everyone would have equal opportunities in life, giving to others what Alistair's daughter Lilith never had. Also, Alistair's curse condemned himself to a life of failure as well. Surely that's not going to bite himself in the arse later on, right? Terma climbed to the summit of the stairs, while the others vanished before him, and Alistair appeared outside of his piss tube. Toma is then told that he is the reason why Alistair built Academy City before he was even born, so that Imagine Breaker would stand out in a city of supernatural abilities. Mikoto and Misaki are guided to the Windless Building by the Anti-Art Attachment, or AAA, an arsenal of weapons that is directly linked to Alistair. They combine their powers to attack his headquarters with the Liquid Proof Railgun, utilizing Misaki's ability to manipulate moisture to continuously cool the propelled coin, giving it endless acceleration, and is able to pierce the nigh indestructible building. Meanwhile, Toma is getting his ass handed to him by Alistair, and it is revealed that Alistair wanted to bring a magic breaker here to conduct his final plan of destroying all magic and phases. The energy of all espers in the city is drained as Alistair summons Iwaz, who dicks on Toma by crushing the invisible thing, which scared the shit crushing. out of Yama back in World War Three. Okay. However, a plot twist happens as Mina oh, there she goes. Okay. comes back. Her master by defending Toma. She manages to draw power from Iwaz due to Mina acting as a grimoire original containing text linked to Iwaz. Also the fact that Misa Misa managed to damage the windowless building which disrupted the ceremony causing Iwaz to disappear. Meanwhile Motoharu and a gang devised a method to remove the shadow blade from Mika. Alistair's plan has completely fallen apart and he starts panicking. As Toma rushes in with a classic point yes, in the sense. Yep, the good old it's right hook. Though, as Toma is forced out the windowless building by something known as the Sword of Damocles, which struck Alistair's collapsed body. And none other than Laura Stewart herself shows up, revealing her true identity as the great demon Kuronzon, who had been previously summoned by Sam Mathers 100 years ago to bring ruin to Alistair. So, a demon controls the church. That's nothing new. Calm down, it's just a joke. Coronzon also says she has taken over the body of Alistair's second daughter, Lola Zaza Crowley, as Alistair can't believe what he's hearing. Coronzon kills Alistair and turns his dead body into her second avatar, with her <laughs> avatar. to possess other people and objects. <laughs> the but Coronzon okay. made one fatal mistake. Never underestimate the Kekaku man. Whether Alistair what? succeeds or fails, he always has a backup plan. Alistair actually sealed numerous versions of himself with different forms within his own body. 
and he is able to fax them anywhere in the world. Which is how he attacked Fiamma of the Right in Russia while being in his piss tube at the exact same time. The different versions of himself are known as the Crowley Hazards, and one that billion looks of them crazy. simultaneously in the British Commonwealth of the <laughs> as they attack the territories oh. under the dominion of the Anglican Church. One of the Hazards, in the form of a young girl, saves Toma from falling to his death, as New Testament 18 ends. Yes, the big bad of the series, who is an 100-year-old Satanist mastermind Herbert, is now a lolly. Japan is truly something. Subscribe mm. if you want to see some more epic index light novel summaries and check out these ones on screen right now if you haven't already. All right, and that's it. No, it's it's not a uh, Japan. It's this this author. Yeah, it's him definitely. <laughs> all, all the fan service that I'm telling you, bro. Any chance that it, it appears, it's like, oh, here we go, fan service. Nah, but. For real though, yeah, here we go. Yeah, he just turns into a whole girl. Okay. Yeah, it just makes all types of sense. You know, yeah. Um but okay, I like that. Yeah, I need to Yeah, cause I think yeah, during these parts, I kinda understood what was going on, but like when I was reacting to him, or if anything, I probably actually wasn't reacting, I was just listening. Uh, yeah, I just yeah, I need to go back. All this church stuff and all uh, religion and all that yeah i don't think i really understood yeah i didn't understand too much of anything of this when this uh first appeared so yeah you got that but perfect someone literally just requested that anyways for a Karazon. so yeah i'm gonna look at that but yeah liquid what is it liquid railgun right liquid proof as you know let me see because i know yeah he when I looked at um, what was it, Misak or yeah, Misak right? Yeah, I already saw this. But let's see, controlled. Okay. Yeah, actually, you know, yeah, I did read this anyways. Okay, with the limits on distance and speed removed. Yes, yeah, so I already read this. Okay. Just seen it again. Getting in a pure world. Okay, so yeah, I'm getting a little bit more into like what Sam and Alistair. Pretty much, well, yeah, all the stuff from Imagine Breaker. So yeah, it just comes back now. Kind of like Fate too. Like I'll be saying, like Fate, it just seems like there's so much story, but it just comes back full circle. Once you get to know the characters more and look at their lore, like yeah, right here, perfect. Like learn a little bit more about Alistair, and then it just comes back with the whole Arrow and all that. Um, Imagine Breaker and you know Sam, me seeing him, you know, in some of these videos. So yeah, anything involving Imagine Break, as long as I just look at something as th like this or something, or you know that, that one simple character, then yeah, there we go. It just all comes together. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. And yeah, that whole district thing. Yeah, I gotta get that. You have to and yeah good to see yeah often is so yeah she's still here i don't know how long after yeah that, like all those events yeah whatever was going on with often i don't know how long after that you know this is right here i know um was it like eight chapters later right or like nine you know from new testament nine or ten but yeah what's the actual time period but yeah, I guess I'll just yeah, figure it out on my own. See how long it's been. But yeah, I'm going to just end it off here. Yeah, there's really not much else I can say. And I think after this, I got to do New Testament 19. I think all the way up to like 22. Yeah, so 22. He made that like eight days ago or something. Um, From when I'm recording this. But yeah, I just ended off here. And yeah, just have to look at those. But other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you like, subscribe again, and I'll just see you guys in the next one.